To motivate their soldiers, Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zheng Fei decided to treat themselves and their army to a nice feast. For their own meal, the brothers wanted to have three of their favourite dishes, each dish with its own satisfaction rating and plate size. They needed to determine the number of these three dishes to maximise their culinary satisfaction without exceeding the table space available. For the soldiers, five different types of dishes would be served on wider tables, so the brothers needed to solve a similar problem. They pulled out their magical tablet. In order to increase the morale of their army, our heroes want to organise a banquet for both themselves and the rest of the army. So, in order to do that, they're going to try to make the most pleasing banquet possible. So on their own table, they want to fill the table with their three favourite dishes, which is uh, snake soup, kung bao frogs and maopal tofu. Um, but each of these has a satisfaction rating, how much it's going to uh, make them enjoy the meal, but each of them has a size as well and the table that they're going to put them on has limited capacity. So basically they want to put as many of these dishes on the table as they can to maximise their satisfaction in the meal. So for this example, if the capacity of the table is 18, then we can see that what we're really trying to do is solve this simple uh, linear program. I'm trying to maximise this satisfaction, which is 29 times the number of snake soup dishes plus 10 19 times the number of kung pao frogs plus 8 times the number of maopo tofus. So that's the satisfaction that we're trying to maximise, subject to this capacity constraint. So basically we have to have those dishes fit onto the table. But they also have to make a banquet for the rest of the army with different dishes, uh, much cheaper dishes of course since they're going to feed many more people, but a much larger table. So here we have five different dishes with their different satisfaction ratings and sizes. And so what we want to do, since this is really the same problem, is we want a model to be able to be reused with different size data. So here we have five dishes, uh, for the heroes table we have three dishes, we want to use the same model. So let's build a mini-sync model which allows us to use differently sized data. So here's our model, we've got an enumerator type telling us the set of dishes we're, which we're talking about, then a capacity of the table. Then we have two arrays here, so this is the first time we've seen array declarations, basically associating with each dish a satisfaction rating and with each dish a size. So there's an array declaration, how we declare an array, so we have one of these satisfaction values for each dish. <coughs> now the important decisions we have to make is how many of each dish, what amount of each dish we're going to put on the table. And so here is an array declaration of variable integers. So this is an array for decisions. So those are the decisions we're going to make. And we can look at the rest of the model. We're saying that the amount of each thing is going to have to be greater than or equal to zero. And we're going to sum up for each dish the size times the amount of that dish and say it's less than the capacity. And our objective is of course to maximise the total satisfaction. And you can see here that we're introducing some new concepts. So first of all, we've got an array lookup. So if I have an array amount, how do I get the ith amount? So the amount for the ith dish, then I just write it like that, like you do in most languages. Next we have a for all expression. So here we're saying for all i in dish, the amount of i is greater than equal to zero. So this is going to add a constraint to every dish's amount. So basically we're forcing this constraint, amount of i is greater than equal to zero for each of the amount decision variables in this array. And we also have a sum expression here, so we're summing up over a variable sized array, so we're summing up over all the dishes, the satisfaction for that dish times the amount of that dish, and that's going to give us the total satisfaction for the meal. So this uh, sum expression generates information over all the dishes, that's what we're doing over there. So we've seen some new mini-sync features here. So we've seen ranges before when we declared the initial ranges of a variable. We also, we can use ranges from L to U, which we didn't here, or enumerated types, which is what we did here. We were summing over all the dishes. We have arrays of parameters and variables. So we had examples of parameters for the uh, size of a dish and variables for the amount that we pick. And we wrote this as array, then a range, of and then the variable declaration that we wanted. So we basically got a copy of the variable for each uh, element in this range. And we've had array lookup here where we have the array name and index expression, 
just like we do array lookup in most languages. And then we've also seen for the first time some generator expressions. So this allows us to build something which is dependent on the size of the data. So here we've got a for all expression. So for all i in range, some bool expression is going to force this bool expression to be true for every value i in that range. And usually i would be somewhere in this bool expression doing some array lookup or something like that. And then we have the sum expression, so sum i in range expression, and this will return the sum of all the expressions for all the i's in that range. It'll add them all up and return that value. And that's what we've used here in this simple model. So now we can run our model with the two different data files for the two different problems we want to solve. So here's the data file for the heroes table. Here's the three dishes that they have, the capacity of the table, the satisfaction of each of those dishes, and the size. And we can run this by asking with the Minisync uh, model and the particular data file we have, banquet1.dz in here, and we'll get this solution. That's how much they should put on the table. Um, then we can run it with the different data files. So here's the data file for the rest of the army. So we have our five different dishes, our capacities, our satisfaction amounts, and our size. And again, we can run that by now just saying the different data file on the command line to Minisync, and we'll get back a different solution for this particular problem. And of course, you can do the same in the IDE. We can just load up the banquet.nzn, and then we can select one of the two data files that we have, load it into the IDE, and run it simply hitting the Run button. So what have we seen here? We've seen basically how we model objects in Minisync. So typically we want to do this. We want to create an enumerated type which names the object. In this case, it's the dish. That's is the enumerated type. Then we're going to create a parameter array for each attribute of the object that we're going to need to reason about. So here we had two different parameters of our dishes. We had their size and their satisfaction amount. Then we're going to create a variable array for each decision we need to make about that object. So in this case, we had to decide how many of each dish to get, so we built a variable array amount, which decided how much of each of those dishes we're going to get. And then we're going to build constraints over the objects using comprehensions. And we saw two kinds of comprehensions, for alls and sums, in this example. So, but we should note that a model has very many sets of objects typically, not just one. Complicated models will have many sets of objects, and we'll be building up different enumerator types and building up different parameter arrays, etc., over these things. And we'll see more exa examples of complicated uh, arrays soon. So, in summary, we've seen enumerated types to represent sets of objects, and what that gave us was the ability to build a data file which was independent of the size. The size could change with the data file. And then we had arrays over the object to represent the attributes of that object and the decisions about that object. And in order to work with these arrays, we needed some way of building expressions which involve an, unknum an unknown number of objects. And so we had for all and some as examples of generate expressions. So they allow us to build expressions over multiple objects, in fact, a number of objects which we don't know until we see the data file. And of course, the Peach ba Garden Banquet problem is a version of the well-known knapsack problem. Uh, that we've seen before.